Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name's Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Today I am going to do... What am I going to do? I'm going to talk. Really? You're going to talk? Yeah, I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about... Thanksgiving. Now I understand this is... I don't know if it's a Canadian thing, but it's predominantly an American thing. It might be in Canada as well. But I thought I'd talk about it, because I like the idea of Thanksgiving. I like the idea of doing it in my country, but we don't. It's just the idea of Thanksgiving, giving thanks. I just... It, it 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 feels quite nice. So I thought I'd talk about that today. Uh, now, whether or not I do actually talk about that is another thing. Because some may say that I don't always stick to the subject. Hmm. So it's a uh, happy Thanksgiving Day to all my American listeners. I'm going to ask actually, where in the world is Thanksgiving celebrated? Celebrated. It might be in other countries. Thanksgiving is a nat- national holiday celebrated on various dates in October and November in the United States. Wow. Okay. I didn't know this. So, Canada. So, sorry, sorry, people listening, Canada. I, I might have known that in the past, but I'd forgotten it. So, United States, Canada, St. Lucia, Liber- Liberia, and unofficially in countries like Brazil, Germany, and the Philippines. It is also observed in the Australian Territory of Norfolk Island. Wow, that's interesting. I genuinely didn't know. Genuinely didn't know. I mean, genuinely, I mean, normally, you know, I pretend to be ignorant, but on this occasion, I'm not pretending. Okay, I never pretend. Countries that celebrate Thanksgiving in 2024. It falls in November. In America, it's today. Thank In Australia, Thanksgiving was started after being brought over by whaling ships from America. Okay, I'm guessing that wasn't last week. Thanksgiving is held in October... In Canada, sorry, Thanksgiving is held in October. So, was it, I'm a little bit late for that one. Sorry, Canada. And is used to show thankfulness at the end of the harvest season. Grenada, wherever that is, Thanksgiving Grena- Grenada, Grenada. Is that where they make grenades? I don't know. Is that in the. Is that like South America, Grenada? Thanksgiving holiday isn't related at all to Thanksgiving or thanks thankness thankfulness or harvests. Instead it's held on October twenty fifth, the same day that a US led invasion occurred in nineteen eighty three. Okay, so uh, that's not really the same thing. I mean they're, they're thanking the Americans for invading them or something. I'm not sure. In Liberia, Thanksgiving started in the eighteen hundreds as a celebration of the colonization of freed African Americans. In the Netherlands, Thanksgiving is celebrated in honor of the penguins that lived in the city of uh, pilgrims that lived in the city of Leiden or Leiden before heading to the New World, wherever that is. 
There are other nations that also have festivals and holidays that are similar to Thanksgiving. This includes Ertendansk Fest in Germany. I'm not sure where that is. Labor Thanksgiving Day in Japan. Um, Japan, that's, that's near France, isn't it? And the Harvest Festival of Thanksgiving in the United Kingdom. We do not have a Thanksgiving in the United Kingdom, so I don't know where they get that from. Why? Where are they getting this from? I mean, if there is, then why haven't I been told about it? So here it is so about the United Kingdom, so I'm interested in this now. Thanksgiving in the UK is not widely celebrated, and there's no specific name for it. It's not really a holiday then, is it? <laughs> if there's no name for it, there's no date for it, it, it kind of doesn't exist. It, it maybe the Wiccans, you know, the, the Wiccans celebrate it, the witchcraft people celebrate it. I don't know. And good for them if they do. And I imagine giving thanks for harvests and stuff. I mean, that used to be a, a very, that used to be kind of the religion before other world religions came over here thousands of years ago and was forced upon the people that lived here. It literally was. I so, yeah, didn't have a choice. Bless them. Uh, a celebration of the harvest and food grown on the land in the United Kingdom. But it wouldn't be called it wouldn't be called the United Kingdom back then either, would it? It was Britain. England, Britain, United Kingdom. I don't think United Kingdom was even a thing until about I think three years ago, I think. <laughs> Maybe not. How many countries celebrate Thanksgiving? Eleven countries around the world celebrate their own day of Thanksgiving. Each country has its own reason for celebrating often to mark a commemorative event in national history. So, why does America celebrate it? That's something I don't know. I'm gonna, let's go through the different, I'm gonna go to America first. Thanksgiving in the United States, typically celebrated on the fourth Thursday of November, which is today, is a national holiday marked by gatherings with family and friends to give thanks and enjoy a national meal featuring turkey, stuffing, cranberry sauce and pumpkin pie. Now, the we you might not know this, but in, in I'm going to say England because I don't I've not really lived anywhere else not not like at Christmas. Turkey is the standard meal like the tra say traditional turkey that that meal that they have there apart from the pumpkin pie is a standard meal in England for Christmas day turkey stuffing cranberry sauce gravy roast potatoes uh, perhaps some broccoli some peas, Brussels sprouts, maybe even sausages, what do they call them? It, not eggs in baskets. Sausages and pigs in, bla pigs in blankets, that's it. Pigs in blankets, that's a sausage wrapped around with bacon. That's probably not great cholest cholesterolly. I mean, this is a weird United Kingdom. Thanksgiving in the UK is not widely celebrated. There's no, spe there's no specific name for it and no specific date. It doesn't exist. Okay. So Rwanda, Rwanda celebrates Thanksgiving. So what, what do they celebrate it for? Oman is called Maganura Day, celebrated on the first Friday of August. Marks the start of the harvest season. Also called National Harvest Day or Thanksgiving Day. 
it honours Rwanda culture with traditional dances, music and food. That sounds like fun. Uh, Netherlands, though not a bank, no, not a public holiday, Thanksgiving is observed by unorthodox Protestant churches in the Netherlands on the first Wednesday in November. Those who observe the day either go to church in the evening or take the day off and go to church on this day. Yeah, the Philippines celebrated Thanksgiving like the US until 1986 after President Marcos Alster uh, after President Marcos Alster after President Marcos Alster I don't know what that means uh, as of 2022 Thanksgiving has regained popularity as a commercial and cultural holiday though it no longer holds official status. Okay, so... Did... I don't, again, I don't know why. St. Lucia. I had a girlfriend from... One of my first girlfriends was from St. Lucia in Trinidad. The nation of St. Lucia celebrates Thanksgiving on the first month in October. The librarian, Liberia, Thanksgiving is celebrated on the first Thursday of November with different customs from the us, ranging from religious ceremonies to relaxation. Some see it as an American imposition, while others reflect on peace after the Civil War. That's not an imposition. Um, yeah, so I'd, I guess there's a lot of political stuff connected to this, and I don't, I don't understand what it is. So, not only do I not understand political, I can't spell it. So, Brazil National Thanksgiving Day was established by President Caspar Dutra, or Gaspar Dutra, later set for the fourth Thursday of November, same as America. While it's not officially celebrated, tradition is observed by various American origin families and Protestant Christian denominations. Okay, so we've done Australia, Germany. In Germany, Thanksgiving is an autumn harvest celebrator, celebration called... Or is an insist... Ertendank, uh, uh, and dank fest. Dank. Dank is kind of a word for like stale and smelly in this country. Dank. Oh, it's, it's so dank in here. It's almost like, eh, uh, mm, yeah, mouldy or ugh. That, that's what kind of we use that word for in this country. Harvest Thanksgiving Festival. The observation, the observ the observance, usually takes place in September or October, depending on the region. So I need, I'm something's bothering me. I need to find out what it is. No, not what's bothering me, but just what is the difference between. Okay. Right. It's all this Protestant Catholic thing. Because it's all like, what I don't know what Protestant is. So Catholics, the Catholic Church teaches, teaches that both the Bible and the sacred traditions, such as the teachings of the church, church's father and authority of the Pope, are sources of divine revelation. The Pope is considered the supreme authority on Matters of faith and morality. Okay. Protestants. Protestants typically emphasize sola scripture. Okay, scripture alone. Meaning the Bible is a sole authority for matter of faith and practice. They do not accept the authority of the Pope or the same traditions upheld by the Catholic Church. Is that it?
is that really the only difference is Protestants believe that Jesus is the only head of the church and the Catholics is the Pope that can't be the only change the only difference uh, Catholic Catholicism it teaches that salvation is achieved through achieved through faith good works and participation in the sacraments such as baptism and all that stuff grace is received okay Protestants I'm skipping because I know about Catholics um, I used to be one Protestants, many Protestant denominations teach sola feed, which is faith alone. I'm guessing sola means alone, meaning that salvation is received solely by faith in Jesus Christ and not by works. While good works are important, they are seen as a result of faith rather than a means of achieving salvation. I can see... I can see, you know, if I'm, you know, stepping back from this, I can see kind of why Catholics would not be happy with that, I suppose. In a sense of, we're doing all this work and, I don't know, maybe that's how they used to see it. Uh, I don't see a reason for dividing people, but it's, it's weird. Mind you, I know some people that think that it doesn't matter what you do in your life. You can be as nasty and as horrible as you want. But as long as you believe, as long as you believe just before you die, just before your last breath, as long as you, you give yourself and you believe, then you'll go to heaven. Now, that's not fair on all the people that try and live a good life. That's what I think. It's not fair. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but it's not, surely. Like, you know, what someone on there, <laughs> so, someone going to the, had a, got a death sentence, you know, in a prison, as long as they sort of say, I, I believe that they'll be fine, no matter how many people's lives they've ruined. No, that doesn't seem very fair. Doesn't seem fair, really. I mean, they should at least... Need to, I think you need to believe for at least a, a month, you know? Give a month's notice. A trial period. See if you like it or not. You, from both sides, you know, you can test it. God can kind of see whether or not he, he thinks you're okay or not. It's like, you know? I mean, Jesus wasn't always the most tolerant, was he? Wasn't a big fan of people selling stuff. Wasn't a big big fan of uh, that stuff. So I'm just wondering how patient it'd be with yeah, some of the prisoners. Uh, I don't know. So that'd be interesting. I like like a cooling off period, just for a month. Like just just sign up for a month, see how we get on. See if you can be good for a month. Wow. So I guess really it's just uh, it's like Buddhism. See, Buddhists are different all over the world, and the the original Buddhism came from India. And bearing in mind that the Buddha came from like a Hindu background, and he he went through whole, his whole kind of, for a long period where he was living on the streets, trying to learn, trying to find a guru really, trying to find someone that could teach him. And he went through lots of different teachers, learnt yoga, learnt all these different things. I don't know if he learnt yoga, I'm making part of this up. I'm making most of it up. I always do. And I don't even know what Buddhism is. I've heard it once and I just thought, okay, I'll just pretend I know something about it. And then he decided he wanted to be enlightened and he sat under a tree and said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to move until I gain enlightenment. And then a coconut fell on his head and 
he realized yeah he he, he discovered gravity so it was, it was that's my memory of it and then he created the wheel and there's a blood brilliant what was that so there was a there was a um padma sambhava is a buddhist that took the teachings of the buddha to china and it basically got spread the the buddhist word the idea of buddhism and enlightenment and uh, all that stuff it's different everywhere. It's different everywhere. So when he took it, when it was taken from China to Tibet, Tibet were always, it basically, okay, how do I explain this? Whatever the person's tradition was originally, they incorporated Buddhism into that, knowing that it would be very difficult for someone to completely change, you know, change lane, change belief. So they incorporated it into what the other person already kind of believed. And then, you know, pushed their idea onto it, their idea of Buddhism and stuff. So some parts of the world, they ring bells and they chant and they they light incense because they were already lighting incense before, before Buddhism came. So incest was already there, but they just like decided to um, to incorporate the Buddhism into that. Some people, some countries have taken on, they've gone more the Zen way. Some people, you know, where it's just Zazen or Zazen, where you just sit. And it's no bells and whistles, really. Other people have gone that more the Western route. Rest and route if you want to call it that. And when I think of that, I think, well, as far as I know, there's never been any, like, big issues between the Buddhists. They just all get on. Uh, it might not be true, but as far as I know, it's... There's, there's crossovers, so there's certain things, there's certain mantras... There's certain, I want to say it, prayers or whatever, that you can say anywhere in the world, and you can you can s talk along to it, because it's in Pali, because basically you've got two languages that the the Buddhist teachers were in, uh, Sanskrit and then Pali. It just seems kind of weird the idea of people. I can well, I don't understand it, but I, I can see how people with completely different religions would be going in different ways, you know. Like, ah, but that was my impression of two different religions disagreeing. Ah, that's what I hear when I. Speak. But I would say personally. I always found that Catholicism was much more, they seem to seem to be a bit more stuck in the Old Testament. Not so much the embracing the New Testament as much. I mean, the New Testament's obviously included, but it's really, for me, the New Testament was the only book that I was interested. I've, re I've read both. I got gifted a uh, Old Testament. Yeah, I got gifted. An, it might be an Old and New Testament. I don't know because even the New Testament's pretty old, to be fair. Um, you know, it's not like I was like ten years old and I was getting all excited in the English lesson at school. What are you doing then, Jason? Why are you so excited? I just, I just can't wait to go home. Why? The New Testament's been released today. <laughs> No, it was already out. So I, I had the New and Old Testament in one big book, which was passed down to me from relatives, someone. And it was old. 
I kind of wish I had it, but I got nothing from back those days. Back those days? Those days, back then. And then I got the New Testament when I was at school. It was the Gideon's Bible. I said, it's not anymore. It's now mine. <laughs> yeah, I was full of jokes back then. Everyone laughed and they just held me up above their heads and carried me around screaming, Jason is great, Jason is great. Yep. Do you ever sit in a room on your own and just think, just sniff and think, I don't remember farting. That's what it's now. I, was like, I don't remember farting, but there's a smell. There's definitely a smell. Hmm. And I'm clean. I mean, you know, as clean as I'm ever going to be. I'm kind of clean. Externally. I don't, I don't know what that means, externally. But I know what externally means. But I don't know what I mean when I say I'm clean externally. I mean the skin. The, the outer layer. What I mean is not my mind. Ooh. So yeah, my nan was a Catholic. She never ever got into the conversation about Protestants. Because... I feel like I've asked her and she said, I don't care. I said, why not? She said, I'm a Catholic. But what about Protestants? What about them? I wasn't interested. It's the, it didn't have no effect on her. Which is weird because she was Irish. But her family came from the south of Ireland, so I don't think it was as big an issue as in certain parts. But I think it's been an issue in different, like, I think in other countries as well. Ah. It's weird when you consider all this stuff came in and was forced upon the population that was there. Now, Buddhism was never forced upon people. It was introduced. I mean, there was uh, um, Dr. Big Bedeker or something went to India and he was I think he was from he might have been from Pakistan or maybe he went to Pakistan from India I know they're two completely different countries with no connections at all um, unless of course you go back 75 years but I when they were the same country I, I was um, before the partition I What he did is he converted thousands and thousands and thousands of Indians to Muslim. Not to Muslim, to a hit, oh, blimey, to Buddhist. Because they had the caste system where they were living. So to take them out of the caste system, they became Buddhists. And... The weird thing about it, they had they had to, they had to make two agreements, in order to become Buddhists. So, I've been christened as a Catholic. I've been christened, not christened. I've been the equivalent of being christened as a Buddhist. So, I've gone through. It's not like full ordination, but it's a thing that in the West that I would that I did was part of where I went to which was um, becoming a Mitra, which is a friend. And it's it's a ritual, it's a ceremonial thing, and it's a, you know something that I've done 20 years ago now. It was 2004. And I still like to go back, but I'm a bit scared, to be honest. Just the idea of being around people, a little bit, a little bit, ooh, a little bit, mmm. And it's weird because when I do go back to the Buddhist centre, people don't know who I am. It's the opposite to being a regular at Cheers where everybody knows your name. What was weird, really, for me is I went back, it's a couple of years ago, went back on a 
I think it was a Friday. Anyway, I went back, and someone didn't know, they didn't know my name, didn't know who I was. And I said, it's me. She said, who are you? I said, it's Jason. I said, oh, I don't remember you. Now, that was a bit upsetting because me and her were quite close. For years. I mean, years and years from, I say close, good friends. So like from 2007, well, let's say 2008, all the way up to, let's say I was still seeing her in 2014, 15. So I hadn't, and I wasn't going regularly after that. So I went and saw her, yeah, let's say 2015. And then I moved here. So I didn't see her very often. And then I went maybe the period during lockdown when I didn't go. And after lockdown, I think it was 2022, was it? She didn't remember me. And she said, oh, I see a lot of people. I said, I've literally been around your house. I know your daughter. I've known you, I've known your daughter since she was 17, now she's in her 30s. I was like, didn't, didn't, rem- didn't remember me. Weird. Just, I mean, I understand it could be a reason, a medical reason for that, but I don't think it was. I think it's just, I was that unforgettable. That unforgettable? That doesn't even make sense, does it? Forgettable, that's it. The things, I used to go and see her sometimes... Daily. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't like I'd see her once a week or once a month. I'd see her nearly every day. I worked with her in a shop. I saw her every week, multiple times for years. And she forgot me. And she was one of my favourite people. (laughs) I'm going to start crying. It's weird. It's strange. I guess that just shows you how little is going on in my life because I remember people. I don't always remember their names, if I'm honest, but I do remember people, faces usually, if I've got to know them. That is someone that I met in 1997 called Lara. And... I contacted her, I think last year, just to say hi, and she didn't remember me. And you could say, okay, fair enough, that's a long time. It's, it's just a, <laughs> which is a fair point. It doesn't seem like a long time to me, but I guess it is a long time. 97, 2007, 2017, 2027, 2026, 25, 24. It's over 15 years. So it's... It's 27 years, yeah, which is over 15. I... I remember her so well. It's probably because I kind of fell for a bit. And so that's probably why. It's a long time ago. I mean, she's married. She's got seven kids now. So I I just... But I just remember her because I got her a little job in the club. Just like like a small temporary thing. We're just to try and help her out. Used to speak to her on the phone quite regularly. She was on the comedy circuit with me. And I used to go and see her doing gigs. And remember once she phoned me up when I was working and she said well I phoned her up and she said oh I had a dream about you last night I said oh and then that wasn't really that was yeah I didn't tell her how I felt I think she knew she just wasn't interested so which is fine but it's strange. She just and the last time I saw her, she came into the club. 
into the comedy club and she was with her sister and they were celebrating, I think it was a birthday celebration, there was a few of them. And then her sister left early and I never got a chance to really say hello to her. I said hello to her, but I didn't get a chance to speak to her. And that was the last time I ever saw her. And that was probably... 99, 2000 time, probably, maybe 2000. And I met her in basically what was happening is my friend who owned the club. He asked me, they had a film crew coming in during the day, during on a weekday, and he was upstairs anyway, he's, he's running the club, so he basically, he asked me if I'd come in and keep an eye on the people, especially the bar, because the bar was all open, so anyone could have just helped themselves and stuff. So he said, could you just keep an eye on everything, keep an eye on the bar, and, you know, that's it. I said, cool, okay. So this film crew was there, and there was, I think there was, uh, Billy Connolly was there, he was part of the film. I can't remember who else. I lose a little bit of track of time, but it's as Billy Connolly was definitely. I can tell you the name of the movie. Billy Connolly movie. He hasn't been in that many, has he? Many 1997. Here we go. Mrs. Brown. No, really? 1997. So, I'm thinking maybe there was... It may be... It was, it was released in 97 and it wasn't made in 97, was it? So let's have a look. Billy, 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 Billy. Billy, 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 Billy. Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly. He has... Blimey, he's been in a lot of films. I didn't realise he'd been in so many. I'll take that back, he's been in lots. 1978 was his first movie. And the last movie was 2016. So, 1997, 1998. So, if I look in The Imposters, let's see who's in that. Okay, I don't know what the name of the movie was then. I really don't know. Maybe it was Mrs. Brown. Maybe it was. It might have actually been beginning of 98, but I don't... I'm not 100% sure. Not 100%. I know how to figure it out. Uh, no. Okay. Um... No, that's the wrong one. Okay. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. I I just so I'm there, I'm getting paid. Not a lot of money, but a few quid was good. To just stay there and just keep an eye on the bar and just make sure that they didn't trash the place and if they needed my friend then I could just go and get him and stuff it was just for the afternoon and then they asked me if I wanted to be a, an extra because there was they were just filling the bar full of people just standing around and drinking, I think lemon, I don't know, just drinking, you know, whatever. And they brought their own alcohol. It was probably alcohol free, but they brought it themselves, they had crates of it. So they were, they were using the glasses from the bar. And I remember I was queuing outside to get myself signed up. And that's where I met Lara. And yeah, that's where so I remember it. And it's like, okay, there's a lot of things I don't remember. And maybe the fact that, maybe because I talk about stuff every single day nearly, I make recordings and that's why I'm more 
maybe have a few more memories, perhaps. I mean, I remember going to see a gig. She did. And I was trying to tell her that I liked her. But I just didn't know how. I didn't, I don't know. I just didn't feel very confident, but I just, she's one of these people, you know when you meet someone, you just dislike them straight away. Just, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's under 50 years ago now. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know, just, that, but I'm just, I don't know why I'm talking about her. Um, baby. What was I originally talking about? Buddhism. Oh yeah, so this Dr. Bedeker, I think his name is, he converted people from in India. I think there was about 10,000, might have been 100,000. It was a big amount anyway. He converted them to Buddhism. He offered them to be, even like forced them. But it was really so that they could no longer be part of the caste system. And they were they were lower caste, so they they went through the process ordain, ordained in as Buddhists. I guess I don't really know how how the process was. And one of the one of the things that they had to promise as part of the ceremony is that they would no longer be aggressive towards their wives which was kind of I remember hearing that and thinking what why would you, what, why what, what in what world is that normal to be <laughs> is would you what it just didn't register with me it's not you know but I think it was both ways I think it wasn't just men against women I think women against men as well I actually lived in a house wow I lived in this house and the yeah I think yeah the the man and a the woman they lived opposite me and then about a hundred no quite a few people moved in afterwards from Jamaican or Ghanaian, I think Jamaican. But these these two, this man and this woman, they were they were from India, and I got on really well with both of them, individually, <laughs> individually. So the bloke was a security guard. He looked like he was about to drop any minute. Honestly, he just he he looked very very drained, and it's ironic because I ended up being a security guard. He, and this was back in 1989, he was really calm and laid back, really chilled out. I got on really well with him. I also got on really well with his wife as well. She was not laid back or calm, but she was funny. And... I even went to her workplace to try and see if I could get a job there. Uh, she was working basically in a sweatshop. I couldn't believe, I've never seen a sweatshop before. And it was almost, I'm not sure how many people there were even legal, which is why they were being taken advantage of. And they were, you know, they were getting paid practically nothing. And they didn't want, they didn't want me because they didn't, they couldn't afford me. They, you know, they, they didn't, they didn't need someone like me to work there, because they, they had a never-ending list of people that were willing to come and work for very little money. So, but I got really well with both of them, but they didn't get on with each other, and the house would be really quiet, and then he'd come home from work. So I'd get home from work about four half four, something like that. And I'd just sit in my room, you know, 
maybe watching a bit of TV. I don't know. I can't remember. It's a long time ago. Doing something. I was, what was I, 19 at the time. Just turned 19. I was a teenager, man. Nice, quiet house. It was in the winter, so it was dark outside. I'd hear him come in, quietly. He'd walk upstairs. He'd open the door to the bedroom. They were sharing just a bedroom together. Had to cook downstairs and everything, so it was and share a bathroom and stuff. He'd open the door quietly, walk in, and the second he closed the bedroom door, she started literally shouting at him. Like from the very second he closed that door, he ch- and she would keep going. For hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. It was weird. I never really... I, as an ad, I don't remember hearing that before. Not like continuous. But individually, they were fine. Together? Mm, not so much. Yeah. But he, he did a, he did a good fair share of shouting as well. But the weird thing about it, I don't like shouting. I'm not a big fan of it at all. If anything, it's the uh, it's one of those things that I really really struggle with. I have done in the past. There was something about their I don't know something about their shouting that made me laugh. Sometimes. Um. Is I don't know if it was a big, high-pitched, squeaky voice. But it just... It was kind of funny. And it, it just... I don't know. Because I couldn't really understand a lot of what they were saying. The only time they seemed to speak in English when they were arguing was when they were swearing at each other. It was weird. It was really strange. But as I said, individually, they were really nice. I liked them. Wow. I don't know. I wonder how they are now. I mean, I don't know. I would, I would guess that he was in his 50s, late 50s then. And maybe she was in her 40s or maybe she early 50s. I'd, it's hard to tell, but he was definitely... He'll be retired by now. And ironically, seven years later, I was a security guard. Well, 1996. So that's seven years, isn't it? 89 to 96. Seven years. What's that got to do with Thanksgiving? I don't know. I still have this memory though, that place. Just living there and getting back from work. And going in and there was a there was a phone on a table at the bottom of the stairs. Like a communal phone. Probably a pay phone. I guess, but you could receive calls. And downstairs, there was two African girls that were students. I don't know what they were studying, but they were like best friends, or they might have, as far as I know, they were they were always like together. And then upstairs, there was. I don't remember who else was living up there. I know I know someone moved in, one person moved in and then he God was he Jamaican? I think he was Jamaican. He moved in and probably within a week 
there getting letters. No, he was African. He wasn't Jamaican. He was African. Just remember the name. So yeah, he's he's. I think he's like Ghanaian. I think. And I got on well with him. I got on with everyone. There was a couple there that looked at me that didn't were a little bit wary of me. I think because he literally had people coming and going all day long. There was a good 30, 40 people in and out. I actually knocked on his door once and the room was full. There must have been at least 25 people in there. <laughs> and uh, you know, I got a funny look by one of them, but the rest, cool. I used to say hello to him. Just, hello. I mean, I guess I didn't need to say hello. You know what hello sounds like, but... I think a few days to a week after he moved in, he was getting mail, which was not for him. There was, it's like, oh, yeah, he's like, it's just because you don't understand the names. Trust me. I actually opened, I didn't know the mail, but I looked at the mail once. And there was quite a few completely different names, all with the same address, all for his room. Because they had like A, B, C, whatever on the doors of the rooms. And it's like, okay. Obviously dodgy stuff going on there. And I remember once, I think it was him. Uh, he was trying to sell me gold jewellery. Because they all had loads of gold jewellery. But I think it was fake. It was like that. There was a thing in the 90s, late 80s and 90s. Where people were walking around with this with gold chains but it wasn't real gold it was fancy costume gold but they try and sell it to you and you can still go in some countries and try people try and sell you gold and it's not really gold but it does look nice and he was trying to sell me some he said oh the gold chain it's a gold chain it's it's uh 84 carats five kilos of a chain and I said, he said, it's, it's a great chain, but it's, it's authentic. It's, it's the, it's gold. It's, I said, like, how much? For you, ten pound. I was like, okay. I'm not sure if it's real. And and you can test. You can rub a coin on it, but they don't like it when you do that. I find, I think, I find that with anyone that's selling something, if you start rubbing the uh, paint off, they get a bit annoyed yeah basically any retail situation any situation involving rubbing really tends to get frowned upon so what other things Thanksgiving now why am I thinking of that though I don't understand why I'm thinking of that room there was a time it might have been in the new year because I was there from September-ish roughly to about April the next year 1990 and my dad used to phone me every Friday evening when I was trying to watch Mork and Mindy and you might be thinking wait a minute Mork and Mindy was on in the late 70s those of you that know but no, it was a re reruns on, I don't know if it was BBC Two or Channel Four. I think it was Channel Four. We only had four channels back then. And I get this like shout upstairs, Jason, here's your daddy on the phone. I was like, okay. So I go down, like I'm standing on the stairs, like, what do you want? <laughs> every every Friday evening, he'd phone me up to see how I was. It was a, he'd never done that before. I mean, maybe because in the past, he wasn't very far away from me. We were in the same town. He was never more than five minutes away, really, in the car. But now I was in London... And I don't know, maybe he wasn't sure how I was going to get on. And I think it was... 
the beginning of 1990 I've got some glasses I mean it might have been the end of 89 but I think it was the beginning of 90 I got some reading glasses some new reading glasses and for the first time I could see a bit better it was just for reading nothing else and I mean that's a weird when you say isn't it it's just for reading the glasses are just for seeing nothing obviously they're for seeing no, but for reading, I didn't need them for distances or for sewing. Although if I was a sewer, I might have needed them for sewing. But I've never really been into sewing. So it is hard to really know. Although I used to like doing that. Is it cross stitching? Oh my goodness, I loved cross stitching. In junior school. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Like, really loved it. To the point where I might take it up again. It might be something I could do while I talk to you. I, I might do something like that. I might start doing... I mean, I could technically film myself doing the cross stitching another thing I was thinking because I don't really want to film my my face but for like YouTube videos maybe if I did some jigsaw puzzles something like that I don't know maybe right now I'm not too worried I, I post I do upload the audio version onto make it convert it into a video and put it onto YouTube but yeah, it's not. It's not. I don't get a huge amount of uh, people listening or watching on YouTube. But it is handy to know, just in case you you want to listen to something from last week, and perhaps you don't know where it is on a podcast. You can just go to YouTube. Um. Hmm. I did think about learning to knit. Well, no, so knit, knit, isn't it? Not, not knit, knit. And I don't, I don't know. I thought about it, but I'm not sure. You know what I mean? I just, uh, 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 uh. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'd, I'd like to. Because I've heard that it's good for your brain because it activates both sides of your brain at the same time. A bit like, I guess, playing a piano or, uh, I guess, a p uh, anything that uses both, anything where you use both your hands. I mean, I suppose some of the things I will use one hand with, I could use two hands. I suppose, do I don't know, but. The thing is, by playing the piano, if you've got a choice between playing the piano, learning to play the piano, or learning to, to knit, knitting is probably, at least at the end of it, if you learn to do it, you've got some gloves or a scarf. What have you got if you learn a piano? <laughs> oh dear. Oh, maybe it was a f show that Billy Connolly was on. I'm sure it was a film. I don't know if it was ever released. It might have been something like that that wasn't... Uh, it was definitely him. Or was it someone else? Hmm... So yeah, it's, I don't know why I was thinking of that room though, because I don't think of it very often. Cause I, I mean, because I lived in London and then I moved away, then I moved back to London the next year. Oh, I got glasses. And I remember 
I was so excited and I went and had to collect them, spec savers. And I took them home and I was in this little room, bed, wardrobe, that's pretty much it really. And the first thing I did when I got home was sit down on the bed. And I sat on the glasses. The first thing I did was sit on the glasses as soon as I got them home which was a bit annoying. And then I ordered two books from a bookshop. I don't know if it was a bookshop in Stratford or I had to collect it from the West End. I do not 100% remember. I have a, I have a feeling it might be in the West End. And they sent me a letter saying that the the books were in. But it was two. One was one was the third wave by Alvin Toffler. I think the other one was the road less travelled. Yeah, the road less travelled. I think. Then there was another one, the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. That might have been... So it's one of those. It was, it was definitely the road less... No, no, it was definitely The Third Wave by Alvin Toffler. Didn't understand a word, really, but I read it. And the other one was either The Road Less Travelled or The Art of Motorcycle Maintenance or Zen and The Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And I remember, I think, yeah, it would have been the beginning of the year, kind of spring. Because once you get to February, because this country here, this old country of mine, it's not too bad, really. We we get cold weather. We do get some pretty severe weather at times. and But as far as, like, temperatures go, where I live anyway, we don't get it too bad for too long. So it definitely, it gets really cold this time of the year, outside, especially at night. You know, there's no way around it, it's, it gets very cold. And then you've got December, which is next, was it 28, 28th today, 29th, 31st, so it's, it's, I think Saturday is the 1st of, no, 28th, 29th. 30, 31, I think it's 31 days in this month, which means Monday will be the 1st of December. And it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty cold through December. And then January, it's pretty frosty and stuff, you know, pretty chilly. And then February, it starts to get nice. I mean, there's even nice days in November. There's nice. There was a nice day today. Nice days in December. Nice days in January. Like nice days where it's okay. It might be cold, but it's bright and sunny. It might be. It might not even be particularly cold. You know, it's it's we have days like that, and then come February. Because now we've already had the longest day. No, the shortest day, sorry. We've had the shortest day. Well, technically we've had the longest day and the shortest day multiple times. So we've had the, the shortest day. So the nights, the days are now getting longer already. And it's not even December. It's starting to get lighter earlier. Starting to get lighter and go dark later. Already. Which is amazing, isn't it, really? I'm making this up. I wonder when it is. When is shortest day? Shortest day. Saturday 21st of December. <laughs> oh, it's early. Uh, I... It's actually not for... A month, but forget what I said. Once we get over, once we get past December, the twenty-first of December, 
the days start to get longer. <laughs> I was kind of querying that myself, and when I said that, I thought, I wonder if any of what I'm saying is actually accurate. I really don't know. I'm really not sure. And it turns out that nothing I say is accurate. Brilliant. I'm very pleased. I wonder if there's a list. Um, show Sunrise. Sunrise UK. Um, right, okay. I want to see if it's we've got the dates. So at the moment, sunrise is one minute past eight in the morning. Okay. And, but, let's have a look at this. Yeah, so I've got a list here. Sunrise tomorrow is 6.53.16. Why was I saying 8 o'clock in the morning? That's we Oh no, blimey. This won't go down. What's going on? That was the 1st of November. Blimey, so in just one year, one, one month it's gone up. Change the month to December. Right, okay, good. Let's let me do this. So, December the 1st, sunrise, twilight start, uh, sunrise is 7.42 a.m. Okay, 7.43, 7.45, 7.46, 7 It's like an, it's one minute and 20 seconds later every day wow so it's december the 31st so 25th of december did i say 21st no 21st of december so if december the 21st is the longest day how come sunrise is 8.01.50 on the 21st and it's 8.02.18 so that doesn't make sense so let's go to 20, 2025 January so once we get to January ah January the 7th then it starts to get earlier I wonder why I'm sure it said the longest day was December Unless this isn't the UK. This is England. Yeah. So according to this sunrise, 1st of January is three minutes, just just under four minutes past. I swear, honestly, this computer is just doing his own thing. It's ridiculous. 8.03. And then as the month goes past, it goes down blimey it doesn't go down by much but the day starts earlier and the day finishes later it finishes later by about an hour and 20 minutes no, a minute and 20 seconds each day but it, the day starts earlier according to this a yeah, about the same. I guess it's going to be the same, isn't it, really? My stomach's gurgling. So really, by the end of January, so the January starts off at 3 minutes past 8 and 54 seconds, sunrise. By the end of January, it's 7.37. So it's like half an hour earlier. And in the evening, sunrise... Um, sunset, sorry, four oh four twenty eight on the first of January, and then by the thirty first, it's four fifty. 
So it's five o'clock. And then, and then we get to February and it all changes even better. Starts off at two minutes past seven, um, 7.36 rather, sunrise. Twilight starts, so it does start to get a little lighter, doesn't it? But then 4.51, 57 seconds sunrise. By the end of February, sunrise is 6.45 a.m. And doesn't get dark until 5.40 It's like an hour. So every month it improves by an hour. It gets lighter an hour earlier within a month. And it gets it stays lighter for an hour longer as well. Isn't that exciting? And in March... First of March, 6.43am. It's light. Until... 20 to 6 it's just it's just in that short period of time and then by the end of March it's light at 6.35 and it doesn't go dark sunset isn't till 7.33 that's absolutely ridiculous isn't it but then the clocks go, do the clocks go back or forward, don't they, sometime in March? Oh yeah, got ya. So March the 29th, the clocks go forward. So instead, instead of early, all oh right, okay. So the early morning, it's light at 5.39 and 58 minutes. Five minutes, five, yeah. 5.39 a.m. on March, the Saturday 29th, 2025, March. But then on Sunday, the day doesn't start till 6.37 a.m. However, on Saturday evening, 6.30 is sundown. But on Sunday, the 30th of March, 7.32. So literally, when you think about it, Mark, what is it now? November, December, January, February. So another eight months. <laughs> I bet it'll be it'll be light. Start get light soon. In a few more weeks. So for some reason I'm being super positive. I don't know what happened. I I changed my electric and gas supplier today so that's something I did what else have I done oh look at this the perfume shop has chosen me it's weird though this is a perfume shop yet the email address is some weird email address that's got nothing to do with the perfume shop it's almost like it might be a scam no so what have I got? Any emails? Nope. Right, so I've joined, yeah, so I've got a noun with a different uh, energy supplier. So I'm hopefully going to save myself. Hopefully, I've got, I've got a tariff of, ooh, where is it? I've got a standard tariff, monthly direct debit amount of £96.69. So I've actually managed to get it down. Hopefully. I think that is... I think it's, yeah, it's a fixed tariff. £96.69. Then regular payments from the first of the month starting... What? Okay. Your first direct debit payment is the 12th of December. Then the 1st of January. Yeah, because I wanted them to come out on the 1st of the month. 
So the first, the the payments for the first of the month of ninety six pounds sixty nine every month, and it's a year fixed free year, which is twelve month fixed. I needed that. I just needed to. But then it's saying, send us a meter reading now. Submit this any time before midnight on Thursday, the 5th of December. So I've got the key. You know, the, is it Alan, 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 key? Aaron, Amelie key? Or Alan, Alan, Alan key? Bobby key? Stevie key? I don't know. Stevie Q. I went to a neighbour. She didn't have hers. Couldn't find it knocked on another's David's door and she said you gave it to me I said well I want it back she said but you gave it to me I said I want it back now give it to me now I didn't but she I did give it to her apparently for some reason I felt I didn't need to use it anymore and I was wrong looked at the meters they're all of those smart meters there's no I don't know how to get the meter reading it's just it's a keyboard on in there it's not like you just press a button and the meter reading comes up I don't know how to get a meter reading I just figured I just thought I might need to go online to find that out <sighs> anyway I've got an email from the previous electric gas and they've it's quite funny really okay so they got this morning they were hassling me. This is this is funny. Let's have a look. Uh, uh, uh. Ooh. Okay. Just have a look. Okay, so. The, give me two seconds. I got a message from them saying, get extra support with your bills. Okay. So this is what it said. Get extra support with your pills. We're here to help. That's the heading. Hi, Jason. We know love, we know life sometimes gets in the way. So we, we're reminding you to pay your balance of £119.91 for this energy that you've used. Please pay today. It's like in capital, like not capital, but like, you know, bold letters, bold writing. Where's the, we're here to help, what, what, which is how this started off. And they've been, they must have sent me three messages already this morning or today saying, you need to pay it, you need to pay it, you need to pay it. Like, okay, it's, what, two weeks late? It's not like, you know, I mean, I've, I've been with them for nearly 10 years. And, yeah, I didn't, and then, and then it's like, you need to pay now, please pay today. Seriously. And then underneath there, uh, the quickest way, how to pay, the quickest way to pay is online now. Please log into your account now to pay the outstanding, at the outstanding amount now, straight away. And then underneath, we're here for you. If you're worried about how you pay for your energy, with loads of payment help and advice, below it includes links to payment support. Uh, you can get help from Mind, the charity. You can get a, a joinee, you know, contact the energy fund advice sits in advice bureau we parted with pay link um, you can get in touch with us all kinds of ways now pay now pay now straight away <laughs> it's like, okay wow I think the bedside manner oh wow I'll tell you what I had because I'm going through some debt advice I had a I had a, a phone call from one of my creditors, and I'm down with them. To I phoned them up the other day, explained to them what I was 
sort of doing, trying to get advice, you know, financial advice and how to try and sort out my situation because it's affecting me. And they they were really good, like really, really good. Like you couldn't you couldn't ask for more. Honestly, I'm saying this and I'm genuinely. They were so friendly, so patient, so calm, so kind and helpful. And then I got a phone call. And I couldn't take it, but I got back to them. And I was put through to someone. I got through to someone and said, Oh, um, I understand. We're just not sure what's going on. I, uh, I understand that you're a vulnerable adult and you're, we got you down with mental, mental health issues and stuff. I said, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm just going to put you through to the, to the dedicated team for the mental health team. I said, okay, thank you. Put me through. And there was a bloke on the phone demanding why I hadn't paid. <laughs> he said, why haven't you paid? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we've already you've got um, a payment plan set up I said yeah I set it up with you six months ago so what's the problem why have you why are you not paying it I said what he said why are you getting financial advice I said well I've spoken to step change why are you speaking to step change for for those that don't know step change is a charity I think it's a charity and they help people that have got financial difficulties and give advice. So they, they go through your budget, go through all the incomings, outgoings, debts, ongoing stuff like that, and try and figure out a way to, I don't know, sort it out, I guess, just to, you know, kind of way to, to, to do something, to make to ease ease the financial burden on the person and they get I think they get millions of calls they've helped millions of people they're really really good they've helped me before a long time ago but this bloke who's saying why are you calling them why are you talking to them for you've already got a, a payment plan now this is the department for men, people with that are made, that might have emotional uh, vulnerabilities and stuff like that that maybe need to be you know, treated a little bit I, I think everyone should be treated gently and be treated with respect regardless anyway but this was a specific team to deal with people that have got severe mental health issues and he was he wasn't shouting at me but blimey he was really like almost a little bit confrontational why are you calling them why are you dealing with them why are you not paying it why can't you pay it and I said, oh, I had to stop him. I said, hey, stop. I'm, like, uh, I'm going to explain it to you. And I explained it to him and he apologized to me. And I didn't complain about him. I didn't, didn't take it any further, but it was ridiculous. Uh, he just said, well, I didn't understand what was going on because uh, apparently they thought Someone listened to the call of the other person. And apparently the person that listened to their call, you know, just to monitor the calls to make sure they happened to listen to our one, which is a very long conversation we had with this lady two days previous. And according to this man, she had given me the wrong information. And they, he seemed to be under the impression that this lady had advised me to file for some kind of... Um, to, to, she had advised me to contact Step Change. And she wasn't allowed to do that, apparently. And I said to her, I said to her, she didn't advise me. I'd already contacted Step Change before I even spoke to her. I was advising her about what I'd done. You know, because I'd already contacted Step Change. She didn't advise me to contact for financial advice. I was telling her 
what I was doing and I was just letting them know because it because everyone's been so good and he said oh and he, was like, he wasn't aware of what was really going on um, and he said oh she was new so she shouldn't be advising you to get advice so she, she didn't advise me I think she might have said that there are places I can go to like Mind and Citizen Advice Bureau and which is a standard thing to give people and also they said it in their email, didn't they? You can contact, you can get help with Mind and that, which is a mental health charity. But it was just like, he was almost, I felt like, I, I was worried he was going to hunt me down. I was just like, please calm down, man. What have I done? And in the end, I had to shut him down. I was like, stop. And got him to listen. And he listened. I don't know if it was my tone of voice, but he listened and he apologized to me. And I was, I, I got very serious. I just like, I thought, okay, I got, to, I got to focus now. And I explained to him in very, very clear language what was going on and why what was going on is going on. And it was all right after that. But it was strange. It was really a shock because I'd literally come off the phone at that point, having spoken to uh, one of the debt advice people. I'd had an appointment. I was like, yeah, I'd had an appointment. So I'd already already been in contact with him and I had an appointment at two o'clock on the phone. And it's just weird. It's like, it's like, it went from everyone being nice to suddenly, why aren't you paying? Wow. Take a step back. And I did want to pay. That's the thing. That's why I set up a payment plan because I did want to pay it. But sometimes you just got to, got to face reality. So yeah, it's just, this is just a bit of a, blabble on about nothing really just about what's been going on here happy thanksgiving what is, is it I've been if that's a um what was that yeah I don't think there's anything else is there anything else I, did I tell you that I contacted the Open University and they told me it's fine so I could just continue as long as I get a certain amount. As long as I, I do the other assignments and get above 40% overall for the year, it's fine. And this year is not even going to count towards the overall mark for the degree. It just has to be completed. I have to get that that score, that mark for at least, you know, the entire year, for at least over 40%. And this, uh, the first assignment that I didn't do, only counted towards 10% of the overall mark. So for that one, I only had to get 40% to pass that. And it's still only counted towards 10% of the whole overall year. See what I mean? So it's kind of, it's, I, I mean, I didn't do myself any favours by not doing it and whatever else, but it's done now. So I'm trying to go forward with that. It's just, there's some subjects, topics that I've never really seen before. I think the problem Sometimes, if when I study something like, I mean, when I read books, you know, generally, I don't always go in at the beginning. I don't necessarily go in to... Yeah, it's, a, it's just different. They're talking about stuff that I've never really heard of. I'm not sure how to explain it. I think what it is, is it's 
because it is the start. I mean, it's the first, literally the first module. I'm now on the second, second module. Oh, let's have a look. Study. It is module activity. So I'm now on what? T TMA one was the first twenty first of November, so that's gone. So I've got to do three more two to mark assignments. TMA. The next one is on the thirtieth of January, that's got to be in. The one after that is the 27th of March. And then the last one of the year is the 27th of May. So, so the, the second one is week 15. The third one is week 23. The fourth one is week 31. So I've just got three left. I haven't done any yet, but I've got three left. So that'll be interesting so I've got plenty of time it's still got two months before I have to do that it's just uh, is there certain things that I'm having a little bit I'm not finding easy it's just some of the, I don't know it's just some of the stuff it like how academic writing I need to figure a way to learn how to do academic writing because it's not the way that I communicate in a written format. I am very first person oriented. And with the academic writing, it's third party or third person almost discussing what is being said and who said it and where it came from and referencing. And so I suppose I do understand it a little bit when I think about it, but. It's. It seems to be that you give as much information as you can in as short a time as you can, in as short a space as you can, with a very brief description, but with a reference so that the person can then go deeper and find out more by going to that reference. And it's almost like a summary summarizing a subject but without making sure you've got the most I, mean, I don't know how you decide what is the most important information but making sure the, the the really relevant stuff is in there but summarizing and I suppose not making the sentences really long just to get the word count up. It's almost the opposite to that. It's trying to get the word count down and fitting as much into it as concisely as possible, but at the same time making sure the word count is correct. I'm still looking at it. I keep going over the first week. I mean, going over it the last couple of days and been reading the chapter that I got to read I'm just I'm trying to figure a way to do it that suits my learning style and I don't know what my learning style is because really well I'd kind of do but I've never when I learn something I'm not tested on it generally you know I can read as many books as I want on any subject but no one's going to test me I can watch videos I can, I can watch you know endless videos uh, psychological videos maybe on um, or philosophy uh, lectures even university lectures but no one's going to test me on that information whether or not it's actually gone in or it's just literally just hit the wall behind me Or an audio book, I, I spend over a hundred hours a month listening to audio books. But how much of that soaks in? How much of that is actually in my brain? 
it is, it's not, I don't know. I really don't know. I like to think, i tell you what I remember. And it's stuck with me for my whole life. Is that scene, do you know Superman? When, and you're probably wondering, where the hell is he going now? Okay, the very first Superman movie, 1978 or 77 or whenever it was. So Superman, um, so Yorbrinus is his father's name, he sends him out. Uh, Yorbrinus and uh, Aretha Franklin, they send him out of the, because they're, they're on a planet, and so they, they launch him into space, a little space uh, shuttle. And so he's traveling for a long time to get to Earth. During his travels, you see, actually it's about like a big conker, isn't it, his space shuttle? Like a conker, like all pep, you know, with the little spiky bits around it. And he, you hear inside, he's a baby, but he's being talked to, and it's telling him all about life and all about the planet and all, you know. So it's giving him all this information. And I like to think that, I've been kind of doing that for myself or with myself. Sort of listening to that, listening to things in the hope that maybe I'll become slightly knowledgeable maybe or intelligent or something. I don't know. Hasn't worked yet, but... What I've what I have been listening to, I listened to this yesterday. What is it called? Let me have a look. The Republic. By is it Plato? Yeah, The Republic by Plato. So I was listening to this last night, and I don't know how I probably listened to it for three hours, probably, maybe four hours. And I was hearing words. I really like, is that, was that from the original book? Plato. There was a word, he said that they use silly billy. Now, that doesn't make sense. Why would the word silly billy be used in silly billy? It just seems like a weird... It, it doesn't sound like something that would be really old. And I'm looking and it's not in here. The famous quotes. What does play say about X and in a... Okay. Now I was thinking, am I, am I hearing things? Why would they use a word like silly billy? Yeah, it was definitely in there. So, Silly Billy Republic. Summary, significance and facts. Plato, the idea, the, the, the dialogue. The dialogues on Republic. Plato's dialogues on Republic. The Republic is one of the most important dialogues of the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. It is Plato's intent in this dialogue to establish philosophically the ideal state, uh, the ideal state, a state that would stand as a model for all emergent or existing societies currently functioning during Plato's time and extending into our own times. The Republic is renowned for its detailed expositions of political and ethical justice and its account of the organisation of the real, of the ideal state. I just... I just want to know the full... Was the word silly billy used? Was the word silly billy used? 
in Republic. In Plato, Plato, Republic. Right. It's not here. Maybe, I mean, do you think maybe they just changed it around just for, for a laugh? Greek text with facing vocabulary and commentary. Yeah, I just found that weird. I think they might have just changed the words. I'm pretty sure Silly Billy isn't. It just, it's, it's, yeah. Unless, oh no, you don't think they've um, changed it in order to, maybe there's something in there that would be a, not a popular word today. So they've took it out and changed it for Silly Billy or with Silly Billy. It's been bugging me, not not in a bad way. I'm just like, really? Is it really? It's interesting though. It's an interesting book. I find the the conversation's good. I like conversations, so listening to a conversation is very interesting. The dialogue and hearing the arguments and not really arguments, but it's really how he shuts down people who, yeah, it's, it's just interesting, yeah. I sometimes think maybe I should have studied philosophy, not psychology, because I, I think I'm more of a philosophical kind of person than a psychological kind of person, maybe. Or maybe I'm just more of a watch television kind of person, a chocolate kind of person. And on that note, I'm going to say au revoir. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way, maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice Maybe in a few hours' time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly. Especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well. I, sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. 
every morning, every evening. There was this recording from we're going back to about 1999. It was uh, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was. person's voice relaxed me. Just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found Being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day.
And something that I do, which you may not realise by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing, I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though they're may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. And when it comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring, and I think, I don't remember snoring, I remember talking, is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. And 
I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I've noticed more and more that the more relaxed, deeper level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. This allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever I imagine my breathing improving, when I've got my eyes closed, I tend to Visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything.
enjoying. That feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free. Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind.
but surely the muscles in your legs Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body. Further and deeper and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, Feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Deeply There's a sense of peace Spreads through your very core.
Harmonie, focus on your mind. slower Very slow. Your stomach. Peaceful in your stomach. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed.
spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. shins and your calf muscles, Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. all the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil. Your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more
Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice your forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of 
complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace.
Total peace. Go. feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. 
even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body and your mind starts to slow down and that could be almost in recognition of I guess my speech not being particularly fast and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour however long you want it to be to just rest and allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice 
to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. Just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing. Completely moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth, and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling. in on your neck the 
front of your neck and your throat. Relax in and loose. sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck, relaxed and loose and calm. And now the back of your neck, focus in Letting go of any tension that may have been there before and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back, down to your lower back. As you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. This spreads into your hips down your lower back into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks. And all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area. Start to melt. Start to really let go. And you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine will continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and 
as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose. They're already Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. The feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. Healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message. your arms you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed so spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows, circumference spread forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so 
so light and gentle. Focusing now on your hands, a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar tips attention to the front of your body, so comfortable, focus 
muscles in your thighs. Your knees so relaxed. Muscles and your shins completely
start counting down now from 20 down to 1 you can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps and each step all 20 steps and each step represents a level of comfort Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Seventeen.
sustain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
eight. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. 
your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now Focusing on your eyes, you're going to begin counting down from ten down to one right now.
so counting down from ten to one ten nine eight seven six five four Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like you're counting down from 10 to 1 what do you expect me to do man you expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down you could try it again but this time I'll go a bit slower this time as you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap 
becomes. So there's that gap of calmness, of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the, the stress and the tension falls into the gap. gives you that distance, that space, now, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, Three. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. And we're just going to start with 
focusing on your thighs. Of course, it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focus in on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs the bottoms of your thighs your outer thighs and your inner thighs basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip and then goes down to your knee joint now this is a big area It's a very heavy area, it's very strong, probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps we give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us. all through our lives and it may, it may seem, sound really weird but I think that all of our body parts especially our thighs need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of Acknowledgement, a thank you, gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. And maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out and in the garden hugging a tree or something well it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree that's why I'm doing this indoors otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree no I can't see the television from the tree if you move down to your knees Gains such an important part. And, and I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally, if I have a, maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason it's then that I realise how much it does you know the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's 
temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, your shins and your calf muscles, and the bones between your knees and your feet. Incorporating, of course, your ankles. So important. You know, anyone that's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is, okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that, because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. It's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. I was like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins, there to protect your lower legs, shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone. Leading, of course, to your ankles. And your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet. We're just going to focus on the legs. And I realise. That now that I've mentioned your feet. You're probably. Focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs 
for a few minutes and you're focusing on your ankles there's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs and there's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations of course there's the muscles the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs but the skin on the outside of the thighs as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive sensitive to the touch sensitive to temperature and inside your thighs the bones there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries, there's all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your, your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. course it's protected by your legs so you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs that fold in between your legs you can just massage with your fingertips imagine your fingertips going inside Massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing 
the same for my shins. Massaging, gently stroking the bones. Gently stroking them, healing in a loving way. Because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are. Because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. When you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with the idea of having love for your legs show an appreciation for your thighs wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles and the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly. Your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs. Yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, still a lot of weight, these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact, my whole legs do. My feet, feet also go. Whew, my toes clap. I'm so happy. Your legs really are amazing. And I know that talk, uh, talking about your legs is probably, possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax 
deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, a very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that journey of comfort. feel it in my hips, my hips feel really loose, and also my lower back as well, my lower back really feels, it feels stretched, even though I'm just sitting in a chair, and there's no stretching, as far as I'm aware that I'm doing, it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. to one and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed ten nine eight seven I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. Two. 
two. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body, You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. And the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises a sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy. To accomplish. In fact, it's almost, you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep, depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority 
of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each muscle in your body, effortlessly. And just observing The sensation of letting go. your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful
is slowed right down, sinking deeply into relaxation. As you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts, sprinkle those thoughts with love, like little petals from a flower, you just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts, which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number. Those thoughts will become more with number seven.
as you now notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching the fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing Focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more that your mind is starting to drift Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your No. 
starting with number Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety.
generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we do now, you're left with a real sense of peacefulness. which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. Just a feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where Everything is peaceful. A place where you can feel relaxed in your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself. where you're not trying to please anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are. And that sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. Healing energy soaking into your body. And that healing energy spreads through your veins. Traveling to each and every single part of your body. And you start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain. It's become part of your brain. spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves, not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past 
for some reason no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something's changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments healing, continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier. sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life And you know that you were born, as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. You were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep, healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to even stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. It's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely it's not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's 
very, very easy to let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you. Continue to flourish and grow. Transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way. Allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose. For yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will 
turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity would disappear. as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm, with all that healing spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just to let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. can continue to relax, if you choose you can drift to sleep, with every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. For now, twenty.
this is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs. 
hands inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. Deeply increases. starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, and it may start listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts that's also Because by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission for your body and your mind, in fact, you give the command to your body and Drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, Focusing on different parts of your body. And you find yourself drifting. But you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. You get alert again to my voice focusing different part of your body starts to relax even deeper, because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone, and the more you drift, the longer you drift. sleep, and that's the last you remember until you wake up, and you are in time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you, if you want to be, and if you do, sleep, it's extremely pleasant, 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. focus on both of your hands now they almost seem to just melt into one where does your right hand start and your left hand end almost as if it's mixed together Focusing on your knees, just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows. sensations in your ankles,
go of everything letting go go of everything everything I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported, and you feel comfortable, and the breathing is really easy, and you feel, you feel confident in how you look as well, so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face just so you can feel my hands so you can become accustomed to them and now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down to the back of your neck. You 
can feel my hands. Gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders and the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them all the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. 
move into the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. You can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now just move down your arms. You do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. And what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. I don't want it to still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms and to your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be 
an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and then do the same with your left arm and actually the same massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist, stroking the inside of your arm, just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. so comforting and just rest your left arm back down and start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we would have been, that area at the top and between your shoulders and then your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving down. stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want. a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, and yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down your lower back, you can 
do that a few times. Sometimes people use the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage, Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it, you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged, it releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part. kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now I'm going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting 
did the upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from the chest. So it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. So we're going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue up the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off to the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine in your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. Working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose, using both hands, fingers digging deep. of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot, massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet.
gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently. And massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers. Each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving down your ankle into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience for having your feet massaged, feels really Turn over on your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again with your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up. I can clean my hands. Make them all fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead, your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows.
just my solitude around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, chin, moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. I feel there's quite a large area. You can move from one side to the next. Moving my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, to feel really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, from just below your arms all the way down to your hips. Now, moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly 
Gott. And then move round to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part because you do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of so now massage your stomach front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button, and going the other way around, to the gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. So now move down the tops of your thighs, your muscles, massaging them. And I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, in front of your thighs. Gently massaging the knees, sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deep. comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin, and you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy. going to 
do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. that candle in front of you and I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out just this is not a big it's just a gentle and that candle will extinguish and then I'll say the next number as we move down and you can just yourself feel more and more relaxed if you need to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more to me after a while and even though there may be background sounds where you are you be aware of those sounds them at all because they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds this forest the pigeons right 
likes to say hello sometimes. And there's the odd plane that goes by. There could be traffic and trains in the distance. But none of that seems important whatsoever. So simple. Now we're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a Activity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting. you lie candle ninety
see
those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed. Allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. It's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, and you give the say-so, you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. body just follows. It's all right, like a breath of relief. Oh, good, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down in a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and that, oh, feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two, and it feels blissful, and just by sitting there like that, the body knows it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset. And your mind will prepare it to let go of everything. When it's just completely allow all the stress of your body to evaporate, when the tensions can just drag
gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and it seem almost alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind and it is almost like a literal unwinding it's like you press a button just releases and it's like a wheel like a cog like the inside of a clock just unwinding and it's almost like you could see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up and the energy that frenetic stressful energy gradually winding down losing its power losing its strength as the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper and you may find stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and it's just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed and tense we're not, we may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. Even your breathing seems easier. and relaxation and you just 
breathing out any excess feeling or tension or stress in every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things have come to a standstill be just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice, which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. Synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind will let you know when feeling completely calm, loose, and relaxed really is. benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair in your hair glistens. this healing relaxation and as you focus on the inside of your scalp right now as you start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain Because they aren't even necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, concentrated
this ever increasing sensation of warmth, comfort, that is spreading throughout your body. scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension but just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in the 
this moment. So let's start off by focusing on the hands. Just be aware of the hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Just maybe move the fingers a little bit. Closing the hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Very, very slow movements. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently. feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squinting your eyes. Scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing on your thighs, and I would just ask you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. And noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, and as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards, as if you're looking up, maybe moving your head down, as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left, but only 
sensations of physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your ears, the parts of your biceps side between your elbow and your shoulders. As you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, can you like just tense them, but very, very gently and slowly. So you're not putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so even, bringing you more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment. Noticing as you gently, very gently, and slowly tighten your muscles in your neck here. Notice how the tops of your arms feel. Just above your forehead. Whenever you're able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly. If that's a difficult thing to do, then maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, easing your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how physical sensations of your lower abdomen. As you move your attention Noticing your lips inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing. side of your mouth, move to the right 
and out of my skin, the top of the mouth hanging down gently against the bottom of the mouth. Always very slowly and very, very gently. sensations for you have heard them, experiencing them, yes, perhaps now upon your hand, I will pull it down, again, include the size of the body, that these muscles are very much connected. As these muscles also move into your hip area and off into your buttocks.
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space? that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way or I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations. whether pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral just feelings. Not being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arm. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. Just 
just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation forearm and your right arm, your right forearm, there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just a feeling like it's there the feeling in your shoulders perhaps your shoulders when you think about them kind of almost like they're the same you know the same feeling almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing Thing on. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. Your lower back. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. The full set connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and when I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently, just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. along and it feels in your chest just noticing what sensations in in your chest right now and the 
with so much of the chest. You see there's the collarbone leading to the chest, or the chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. Of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, or mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side or underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back. As well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is in your chest. And when I notice that I focus on my chest, I feel it in my in my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing. But, you know, when it stretches my chest and my back at the same time, when it feels, it feels okay. little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly. I don't know. I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. That's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas back. It feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex. various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, when you do tense a muscle, way more than it would normally. And you have to feel that you're able to do that. And if you ain't doing it, 
because uh, uh, when she she was a pair of paws your body you need to be gentle with yourself at all times in and out of seeing people that's something you were taught And you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? Peaceful is your mind right now. With nothing to think about, and just my voice to listen to, because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down, as your body that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect to happen. The relaxation. body, maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom, when you start maybe to as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind, just leaving that there, kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie, a space movie, you know, and it's that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe, free, and continue. 
is something that you can do yourself in your own way. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes, close your eyes, just
seen any physical thing. I don't know if there are some places that are. focus on the fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly, which is what the word sounds like to someone that's actually just been on Quercetin and had a fever for eight weeks. So now I'm going to try and get my pointer down to level five. This time stress and the anxiety that you might have. that you start to just get more and more relaxed as does the the pointy motion of my pointer marking my time Focus. 
you can take in to find yourself in a spot of calm and a full sense of awareness so calm and relaxed just as if you were in your mind's eye looking
you to make up your mind for the dark moments I want to explore that with you what it feels like for you to decide for the dark moments not forcing yourself but giving yourself it is a command really isn't it for your friend is it that you just went a little bit further than only you can really tell yourself in that moment might be her saying the same to you you know relax relax you know calm and when you speak gently it's like you can't someone else can't really have the same Test it out. Have a little test. Do a little test to see how you roll. And you can get more of an idea to thought. Maybe you can thought to think about and create that sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind. And that could be just by you. start by just you're focusing your hand so you're focusing your hand you just tell your hand to relax you just say relax as you focus on your hand you could say my hand is light or I want my hand to be light and I think if you actually do it directly Imagining that your hand kind of feels a bit dark or it's like a bit weird. So talking to your hand, you just say, relax. Focus on your eyes. So tell your eyes to relax. So if you're saying the same word, relax, you know, find the right tone that it comes with. You know, I might say relax. And you you might say relax or relax. You know, you, you might say it differently. focusing on your eyes rather than just your hand or eyes or eyes rather you just tell your eyes to relax relax
start focusing on that and spiritually you know just kind of let it work a little bit better you know a little bit of therapy for you is constant growing in your life you know disappearing but of course you get that in your own life as well just kind of you know growing in that way of attention to the inner as well you know and that that will basically Thank you. 